Hey everyone, Mojax back in the lab once again for another walkthrough video. Today is a good day. Why? Because I got a parcel this morning from dex.co.uk and it included this bad boy, the Native Instruments Control X1 Mark II, the long-awaited, long-rumoured new controller for tractor from Native Instruments. I'm not going to mess around today, let's just get busy, let's get into it. So here it is then, the Control X1 Mark II from Native Instruments. It's called the X1 Mark II rather than a whole new name because it is just really a refinement, a revision of this one, the existing Control X1, which is a really popular controller, been around for a few years. And that's found favour with not only with tractor users, but with say Serato Scratch Live users and so on as well, because there's a lot of controls there that you can map to pretty much anything you want and it's really flexible, really compact. Both of these are exactly the same in terms of the actual physical design and so on. Uh, there are a few obviously new changes to it, a little bit more in terms of feedback. I'll just take you through from the top. So they've both got the standard just single USB connection, no power supply required. You've got the EQs, you've got the middle section is where the, the sort of the big changes have happened. Now you're browsing, you're looping and, and loading and so on. Plus you've got these new touch strips on here. And then you've got a slightly different layout in terms of the bottom section as well with the cue points and the uh, sort of transport controls play in and cue and so on. So not a lot on the surface that looks really different, but certainly once you get into this one, there is a lot more to play with. So I'm going to hook it up to Tractor now and I'll show you around a bit more. Okay, so we're just going to start with showing you the main sort of playback and transport controls, that sort of thing. First of all, though, I'll just show you how easy this is to assign exactly the way you want within Tractor. So we plug it in. You see straight away flashing there A and B. That's your A and B decks. You can go between C and D, C and A, and B and D. Entirely up to you how you want to integrate this into your setup. In my case, I'm just going to go A and B for now. Push any of these three knobs in, and that will set that up for you so now that's immediately come to life we've got all our controls there your browse knob in the middle you can push that in and that will put the, the software into browse view these are touch sensitive encoders now there is a setting where in the preferences you can have it so as soon as you touch this it goes into that browse mode and then when you let go it comes back out of it again i found that incredibly annoying turned it off straight away you might think differently so you know the options there if you want now you can just browse through as i say with that one or you, if you hold down the shift you can browse through your different playlists over there as well let's get a track loaded instead of the two separate rotary encoders now we've just got left and right buttons so we just hit left and that's loaded straight away and again you can see we've got reflected here now these are multicolor leds rather than the old x1 which which had the one color so now we've got these uh, different types of cue points if you're familiar with tractor you'll be familiar with these a white one is a grid cue point a yellow one is a load blue is a regular that's a loop cue and there is another color for the fade in and fade out cues as well within tractor so all reflected straight away on your on your controller much less you know need to look at your screen with this one than there was with the old x1 which is a, a nice touch i think so we can just get going let's get some recording on the go so you can hear what i'm doing again i'm just using music from warped bridge local newcastle label again check them out they do good stuff simple as that so you've got all your key points there ready to go and obviously your play button hit the cue and that will go back to your last cue point if you have a, a track without a cue point or you've gone to a part of the track without a cue point then that will just show up and you can just hit a temp cue and go from there so that's really straightforward then you've got your sync button and if you hold down shift there is a, a separate supplementary control for that which was that will set the deck to be the master deck so for the master tempo if you've got four decks running that's obviously quite useful to have that option and then we've got the flux mode button as well so we've got flux just hit the flux and that will put it into the flux mode so anything you do in terms of you know moving back and forth with the um, your vinyl or your cd anything like that if you jump your cue points it will just carry on from where it was and that lets you do loop rolls as well rather than just the regular auto loops which is really nice so flux mode pretty useful there is a secondary function for that you'll see it's got tap there now by default that's set to tap tempo so you hold down shift that will flash and you can tap the tempo of the track uh, in my case i've actually got this set to cues five to eight so if i hit shift and flux now i've got the cues five to eight in there as well so if you use multiple cue points in your set then that's going to be more use to you i think Let's just turn that off again and we're back to where we were 
Now for your actual playback controls, then this is where the touch strip comes into play a little bit more. The touch strip, by default, is used for sort of pitch bend and phase adjustment. So I can just sort of slow and speed it up, almost like a platter. So if you want to use the X1s with no kind of transport, you know, no platters, um, no jog wheels or anything like that, you really can do that with this now. You can just adjust that phase, just using up there. And if that's not enough for you, if that you, that's at the moment that's set to left deck, right deck, what you can do, just put your finger in the middle, drag it right over there, and now that's fully, the whole thing does the left deck. And then you can put it back in the middle, or you can have, that's now controlling purely the right hand deck phase adjustment. So we'll just put that back in the middle for now. We're back to deck one and deck two phase adjustment on both, which is really nice. So that's your playback, basically. That's your full uh, controls of your, your playback, your cues, your, and so on. We'll get into looping next. That's the sort of next exciting part of this X1 Mark II. Okay, so let's get into the looping side of this little bit of kit then. Now, there was a, I've been using Tractor now for like a couple of weeks, uh, you know, seriously at gigs, and I found a big problem with the original X1 for me, as someone who wasn't really that used to it, is you've got these loop buttons here, or the loop knobs, which are fine, but there's no kind of telling from here what loop length is set to. So I would sometimes, at a gig, I would just hit the loop, thinking it was set to four beats or something like that, because I hadn't looked on the screen. And actually, it wasn't at all. It was set to like a half beat or a quarter beat, and then instant mess, you know, the mix has all gone to hell. So that's a big improvement. Also, the fact that these two knobs there, or these four knobs were all kind of, you know, close together, look the same. So there was a couple of occasions, this actually, this Saturday night, where I hit this one, trying to do a loop and accidentally loaded a track. So I'm really much happier with this layout on here. Uh, it works much better for me. So we've got the loop options, then you've got your different loop lengths at a glance. So before you hit that button, you can see that that's your loop. Now we'll just get that playing. And when it's flashing, the loop is active. So again, visual feedback for you there. And you can adjust them on the fly as well. And then that works with the flux mode. So you can do like a loop roll. And then we can take this one step further by putting this length onto the touch strip again. So all we do is just hold this central part of the touch strip down, push that loop encoder, and now it's like a one button. So you touch the encoder at the length you want, and it just puts it there. And again, that works with the flux mode. So they're really getting a lot out of this touch strip. It's not just for one function. There are a lot of different things. Disengage that, all we do is just hit that there. So the looping, much, much improved. Really, really happy with that. Let's uh, move on and we'll get into the effects side of this little bad boy. Okay, so let's take a look at the effects then. Obviously, effects are one of the big selling points of Tractor. They've got some really cool effects in there. And this X1 Mark II lets you get a real control despite the what looks like fairly limited controls you can actually do a hell of a lot with this so first of all then we're in a single effects mode you can see on the left hand side there got it wet and dry your three parameter knobs there along with your different controls that you can change on that so just turn that on and that's your filter on and off but you're not just stuck with those what you can do is basically shift will open up a whole lot more things. So we can go into a three effect mode, turn those on, and you've got the control over three different effects on each effects unit. So in theory, you could have like six effects running on the one deck, which would probably be a bit over the top for most people, I would have said. But again, you have got that full control. Now, again, we'll go back to the single mode. And what you can actually do, if you hold down shift and then turn that top one, you can actually choose from the list of what you've got. So you can pick all these different effects. Let's just play with that one. Very simply. So all of this, I'm sure once you practice with it, would be completely intuitive. You know, at the moment I'm kind of new to Tractor in general, but 
this X1 Mark II is making it pretty straightforward to understand. Now we go back into the triple effects mode and then we've got, again we can change the effects themselves so we can use these with the shift button, go through and set a different one for each effect. And again then you turn them on and you've got your control over those parameters. Dry and wet on the top one. And then also what you can do is use the shift button and push through and that will actually just go through the list of effects one at a time as well. So full control, absolutely full control just from this one really small, really compact bit of kit. Uh, again, you can then assign these parameters to, yeah, you guessed it, to the touch strip. So we just hold that down in the middle like we did before and I'm going to do it with this first one which is the wormhole and then all we do is hit that button there and that will assign that to the touch strip and I can do the wormhole just with that one so they're really getting a lot of use out of that touch strip and again to reset that all you do is just hit that back again and we're back to the original mode so the flexibility is definitely there so that's it in a nutshell really it's a pretty short video but you know it's it's so plug and play this control x1 mark ii you know when i first got into tractor i bought a tractor scratch pro setup but last year and i made the mistake of just really playing with all different controllers i had already and kind of playing with tsi files and mappings and it was really complex and what i've discovered in the last couple of weeks when i've tried to use it seriously is if you use the native instruments their own custom designed stuff it just works out of the box really straightforward and it's a lot simpler to use than you know a lot of the things that you'd have hassle with previously if you're trying to map your own controllers i'll just show you the preferences quickly you've got that full browser on touch which i hate to turn that off straight away but i'll show you how that works so just touch the button and it goes into browse and it goes back you might like it i certainly didn't but you might um the touch strip oh, i didn't look at the touch strip the actual controls if you hit pause there what you can do is actually just just close that up you can seek through the track. You're not going to be scratching with it at the end of the day, but if you want to get to a certain point in the track, and if you hold down shift, you can get through really quickly from beginning to end, basically like a, a needle drop kind of thing. So you can go right through the track to wherever you want to go. So that's quite handy. Uh, let's go back into those preferences then. You can adjust the split mode so it's locked all the time. You can have it so you can't accidentally assign the effects or the looping to the uh, touch strip if you want to. Uh, you can invert the directions. That's your flux mode choice. So your primary would be flux mode in my case, or you could change that to absolute relative mode or hot cues, five to eight, tap tempo, whatever you want, basically. You've got a lot of choices there. You can recalibrate all the knobs and that's your brightness so if you're in a really bright club what you might want to do is have so they're only vaguely dim but i like them nice and bright so you can really make use of those multicolor leds that certainly works for me so again you know options to play with but nothing that's gonna do your head in nothing that's really complicated at all so yeah just to show you then with this remix deck in there as well before we finish just going to set it to c and d and you can see my remix deck the four cells in the top row have all shown up all with their different colors and you can basically just hit them from there you can mute them as well you can delete them if they're stopped you can delete them like so so i've now got an empty remix deck almost but again you can sync and so on as well so yeah it's definitely not going to re replace an f1 for you but it's a nice additional feature to have the original x1 was made before the remix decks even existed so it could be a useful bonus something to think about as well so that's my brief walkthrough of the Control X1 Mark II then. I'm sure there's more to get into with it, but ultimately this is my first day playing with it. It's my first impressions, and it seems really plug and play, really straightforward to use. So I'm quite happy with that. Uh, thanks again to dex.co.uk for hooking me up with this unit to use for the video. Uh, check them out if you're after anything DJ equipment-wise, studio equipment-wise. They're good guys. They will look after you, and they will sort you out. So big thanks to them if you want to check out more videos from me my channel is youtube.com slash mojaxvdj and i'd like to thank you all very much for watching and hopefully i'll see you again soon thanks bye bye